Hi, everybody, and welcome into the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show as uh, we are settled in at Gordonwood Stadium. Quiet now, but boy, was it crazy and loud on Friday night. Coach Sammy Burnett, how are you, Ben? I'm doing well, Carl. How are you? Man, I'm doing wonderful. And it was great to have a game to start the season where the crowd was into it, players were into it. It was just a crazy atmosphere, but hey, we got the win. That's right. You know what? It's neat to see the stands full again, uh, and I could definitely hear them. I usually don't hear the fans, but man, I could hear them, and they were chanting defense at one point, and I was right there chanting with them. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were. Well, of course, uh, Brownwood got the win, 58-55, last-second field goal by Junior Martinez, who was cool as a cucumber, a sophomore. Uh, 21 yards out, nailed it. A little bit low is a little bit scary when he kicked it. Boy, he had a kid right in his face, looked like. And for a minute, I thought it may have been blocked, but he got it through, got the win, and here we go, start the season at 1-0. to So That's right. You know, I talked to Junior at that time. It gets hectic and crazy, and I'm trying to calm everybody down. I look over there at our kicker, and he's just cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> and I told him, I said, uh, as I mentioned in the post game show, I'll take a delay of game. We can move it five yards back so you can get a better angle. He mm -hmm. goes, oh, coach, that angle's fine. I was like, well, knock it in. And then, of course, you're always going to have pressure off the edges, and we really work on our timing from snap, hold to kick. And we always want it to be about a 1.3. and. Uh, we've been hovering around there pretty good, so I thought Jason Jackson did a good job of snapping the ball. Case got on the tee, and he got through the uprights. I don't care what it looked like. It was worth three points. Boy, it was. Jason is your deep snapper, at our core star receiver, who got a couple of big pe uh, catches in the ball game. Mm -hmm. but he was right there. Let's uh, uh, go back a little bit. You've watched the film over this weekend, so let's start with uh, let's start with defense first. Uh, what did you say? I know we did have a few breakdowns, but... We came up with some big plays in the second half. Yeah, you know, I think the first half it was just big plays, and uh, they were able to make double moves on our secondary because we weren't getting pressure on the quarterback, and they do a good job of that. They've done that for two or three years now. They have big linemen, and they do a good job of protecting the quarterback, and when he can sit back there and just bounce around until he gets ready to throw it to who he wants to, it uh, gives them a lot better chance of being successful. Uh, busted a couple assignments with the back out, uh, releasing. They ran him up the seam one time for a touchdown right before half. Then they ran him on a rail route, uh, swung him, and we didn't get him picked up. So mm -hmm. had a couple of big plays, and uh, I think we neutralized that for the most part in the second half. Uh, and, and what people uh, got to remember is that's a pretty dominant football team. They're mm -hmm. good. Uh, they do a good job up front on the offensive and defensive line, and uh, uh, they're going to make some big plays. So uh, I thought our kids did a great job of being resilient and listening to what our coaches told them. And our MO the whole week was we're going to wear them out and win the game late. And uh, we got to a point where we could have been down by 17, but Jordan Leach made a big play on stripping the running back and falling on that and recovering the football force. And yeah. well, you know, we marched down there and scored and uh, you know kept it a close ball game. And we did exactly what we thought we were gonna do. Uh, we were up by seven late in the game. They wound up tying it up and it was okay. It's 55-55 and really not any pressure on us. You know, we had two timeouts and I uh, told Coach Howard, you know, you just call the plays, let's pound it, pound it, run the ball, and if we got to throw it, it will let you know, but uh, just keep pounding the ball, and I'll manage the clock. And well, I knew we had two timeouts, and we kept, you know, chalking off eight yards of carry. I knew if we could get in field goal range, I'd run the clock down until we either get one shot to win it or we'd go into overtime. So uh, it worked out perfectly. I had a big play on that last one, and, you know, we maybe could have just kicked it from there, but Shooty almost put it in the end zone, and then uh, we got down to – we had – eight ten seconds so they ran it down to two called a timeout and junior walked out there and did his job and as a sophomore for him to get uh, his second uh game winning field goal is big uh he got uh, got to little, know a little bit more about junior i mean he that boy don't sweat much of anything and uh he's master at what he does and does a good job of it and I don't know how many touchdowns we scored. I think it was somewhere around six, somewhere in that area. We had seven touchdowns, three field goals. So that's uh, seven and nine, 16 points that he put on the board for us. Mm -hmm. We don't get those points, yeah. and we preach special teams. I know it wasn't rebuilt as well on Friday with the kickoff returns, but uh, we preach all, every one of those points count. And if he doesn't, make so, he doesn't make those extra points and those field goals, we're not tied late. So. Right. Uh, a congratulations to him and what he did. And, and uh, you know, when we talk about the kickoff return, we had some guys out there for the first time that 
uh, first Friday night experience, we don't have film. Week one is always difficult because you have no special teams film. You can only go on what you did last year. Well, last year they had a different kicker, and it was the Whitehead kid, and he could kick it deep, and that's what they did. We knew nothing about what they were doing. Uh, talked to our kids about it. Like I said on the post game show, we spend three hours a week on special teams. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of time. Uh, back in the day when I was special teams coordinator, I got five minutes a day. Uh, we spent wow. a lot of time on that. And I know it wasn't as evident on kickoff return, but they were doing some things that we hadn't seen. We adjusted. Mm -hmm. Our kids did the best they could. They just, a couple of them, one of them, uh, we let hit, and we looked at each other, who's going to cover it, and we didn't. And then the other, we tried to catch, and they just dropped them. But, you know, that happens. But, you know, facing that adversity, and I just think it all worked out the way it was supposed to. You know, the Lord has a plan. And every one of those trials that we faced, they overcame. And I think that's going to make for a stronger team for us. Well, speaking of pounding the football, which is exactly what we did. I mean, we were getting chunks, seven, eight, nine, ten yards of carry. <clears throat> Conlon Anderson just ran crazy, nearly 300 yards, 35 carries. And the uh, running game and the offensive line, I thought, did uh, Yeoman's job Friday night. Well, you know, I told you he's an Earl Campbell type back. And that's really what he is. He carries the ball a lot. And he's a pounder. He averaged uh, 8.1 yard, 8.17 yards a carry, I think. Uh, 35 carries for 268, mm. 286 yards, excuse me. Chance Jones had uh, 50 yards rushing and a couple of touchdowns. Uh, Jalen Brown had good yards rushing. Uh, you know, so <clears throat> I thought we had a balanced attack. And the, But here's the deal. I go watch that film and have the luxury of seeing an end zone angle because we provide that. And uh, our offensive line did an amazing job. I was really pleased with what they did. Uh, they're good defensively. They're, they are a good football mm -hmm. team. And for us to put up 58 points, I thought was pretty special. Uh, we only had three pressures on our quarterback, which that's their MO. They're going to, like I said before, they're going to get to you before you can get the ball off or before your running back can get the line of scrimmage. And I thought Coach Denard and Coach Howard had a great run game plan for them. Uh, we put a tight end in the box, sometimes a tight end and a sniffer, so we had max protection. And, uh, you know, we played a tight end all night long, and it, it uh, really was to our advantage. And a lot of the times we get a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Conlon and the number five, the safety, and we're going to take that matchup every time. We tell our running backs, you got to be the safety. And I thought we did a great job. So when I after watched the film this weekend, man, I couldn't be any more pleased where our offensive line is right now. If we'll continue to grind and continue to grow, I think they have an opportunity to be one of the best ones we've had since I've been here. Yeah, and four new starters. A couple of them did play some last year. Ethan mm -hmm. Pacina, three-year starter. But, man, they did a great job. And Conlon, you, you mentioned this in the postgame show. Scott and I talked about it during the game. Yards after contact. Yeah. You know, 286 <clears throat> yards total. I bet 200 now, he did have the one long touchdown run. He was basically untouched. Yeah. But other than that, his yards after contact were phenomenal. Yeah, and that's what I said. He's a guy that you're not going to bring down with one guy. And, you know, a couple of times at safety, he was one of their better football players and made mm -hmm. plays as he trucked him reaching up and grabbing a foot. Mm -hmm. If not, he probably takes those for a lot more. He probably had over 300, 400 yards. But, uh, yeah, and he started just, man, getting look like a – bull ram just battering people I mean, he would drop that head and just put it to him yeah. and, uh, i don't know about that guy but i guarantee you number five knew who number two <laughs> yeah. was when the game was over because he was punishing yeah him. So, uh, kid. yeah he's he, a good athlete yeah very good athlete and it's just a testament to conlon and his yeah. hard work in the weight room i mean he can squat a ton he got extremely uh extremely powerful lower mm. body so uh I continue to look for great things from him. So yeah, you 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 commented Earl Campbell like just put your head down mm -hmm. and run over people. Yeah, man, no doubt. Uh, big win, start the season off to Midland Greenwood coming up uh, this Friday. We're going to have your player of the game in just a few minutes. Something new, so mm -hmm. let's not forget that. But you got some ticket information on Greenwood. I got some this morning. I think all ticket sales online. Yes, and let me go through that real quick. You sure. can go to brownwoodisd.org forward slash athletics and uh, get the link to get tickets. If you don't want to do that, you can go to greenwoodisd.hometownticketing.com forward slash uh, embed forward slash all uh, and get those tickets. Probably the easiest, again, is go to brownwoodisd.org forward slash athletics to get those. Uh, they should be online today. Uh, you, If you show up at the game, you can get a ticket, but you still have to do it through your phone mm -hmm. online. You, they will have no hard copy tickets to purchase there. So if you show up to Greenwood and you don't have a ticket, don't panic. You'll be able to get one. You just got to have the capability to have a phone to get the Internet to do that or wh however that works. 
uh, and there's no limit on tickets. So it's 100% capacity, so there's no limits there. So like I said, you can go online right now and get those tickets. Hardest working man in the stadium Friday night was Derek Stuckley right here who's doing the cab bet. He was running up and down. I think he lost about 12 pounds, he said, during the game. You know, we got <laughs> we sort of got in a little panic. I looked up at the scoreboard and it said they had 51 points. Yeah. I'm like, they don't have 51 points. They have 48 points. And so we're scrambling trying to figure out what happened. And I'm like, yeah. where's Stuckley? I knew Stuckley would <laughs> have the answer. And I saw him down there and I ran down there to get a confirmation. And about that time, I guess they noticed what was going on. They changed the scoreboard. But that got a little frantic right there. But you can always depend on Stuck to get oh, the yeah. stats right. Yeah, I, I kept looking at my score sheet saying, where did I miss three points Me too. At? I was like, what happened? What in the world? Anyway, we get the win, 58-55. We'll get our player of the game coming up here in just a few minutes. We have some other results from the weekend. Yeah, I got a lot of results. Let me run through those real quick. Tennis defeated San Angelo Lakeview 18-1 to in dominant fashion. We had a game, uh, a combined game at Gordonwood Stadium. Uh, our combined team played Blanco's JV. Really uh, not fair for those guys that got there and played Blanco's JV. They were big and strong. Mm -hmm. You could tell they're a good JV team, and they dropped that game. But, man, our kids played hard. and and never quit fighting, so I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the fact that uh, they're getting to play. Like I said, you look at our uh, our varsity team right now, we have three or four kids that are playing on the varsity right now that are contributing, whether they're starters, whether they're special teams guys, uh, whether they're, they come in and spell guys or whatever, but uh, those guys started on that combined team. And the fact that those guys are getting out there and getting to play four quarters and getting those reps, I think it's extremely important, mm -hmm. so I'm really pleased with them. Uh, their game with Greenwood this week got canceled. They're having some COVID issues and lost several kids on the freshman team, so they won't have a team. But we will uh, let those guys go with their uh, the Maroon team and the JB team and play with those guys as well this week. Uh, so still trying to find them a game, but if not, they still will get to go uh, to Greenwood Stadium and, and suit up and play if that opportunity arises with the Maroon team and the and the. Uh, JB uh, mm -hmm. volleyball at Argyle tournament. Uh, they defeated Brian. Uh, they defeated uh, Liberty Christian. They defeated Granbury and finished sixth overall in the gold bracket in the Argyle tournament, which is a pretty powerful tournament. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to Coach Smith and the Lady Lions volleyball team, who's performing really well. I think they're going to uh, be ready to go when district hits. And then mm -hmm. uh, our JV went over two land passes and was successful, thirty-five to six. And then our uh, freshman room team dropped their game 13 to nothing to land passes. So all in all, a good week uh, for uh, our sub varsities, our tennis team, our cross country team was off, but uh, uh, volleyball did well, and, and our tennis teams continue to do well, and our sub varsities perform well too. All right, we got some stuff tomorrow. More volleyball. Uh -huh. <clears throat> volleyball at Clyde. Uh, I think they got a dual match going. That'll be at 4:30 uh, with the freshmen. JV will be 5:30 and varsity at 6:30. I uh, also want to mention that Wednesday we have our Brown County. I mean, uh, our Brownwood Invitational at Gordonwood Stadium cross country meet. Our high schools will go, boys and girls of the will go at 9.30, and our junior high will come back and go at 4.30. I do want to make people aware there will be uh, road closings on Milam Drive and Dickman Drive during the course of that running. So if mm. you're driving in that area, be uh, expect some closures uh, because we're using some of those roads for our runners to, to get that cross country uh, uh, map going right. and get that, that – trail going so there will be some road closures there but we are hosting our, our invitational at Gordonwood Stadium on Wednesday and of course Thursday again uh, Midlands JV and freshman team will come to Brownwood we'll play at 4 30 and it's at 7 but it's as to followed so if you're coming to watch your JV kid I'd get there a little early what maybe watch that freshman game and as soon as they're done we'll get that JV team going and uh, Midland can get back home and then uh, volleyball again we'll go over Wednesday but volleyball will be at Godley on Friday, they play at 5, 5, and 6, and then uh, we'll, of course, travel to Midland Greenwood and play the Rangers at 7 o'clock at Ranger Stadium, I guess it is. Greenwood started the season. We'll talk more about the Rangers. Uh, they played a really good top 10 Estacado team yeah, pretty did. close on Friday It, it was a close ball game. They had a couple of turnovers themselves and uh, made a couple of big stops against uh, Greenwood, on, I mean, against uh, Estacado inside the 10. One was on the one-yard line mm -hmm. and made a big stop. So. Uh, they got things going on. They got a good group of kids. They got a good core group of kids coming back and got great numbers. So it's going to be another knockdown and drag out, I'd imagine. Yeah, I watched some of the film of that game. Their defense will get after you. Yes, so, they will. Yeah, it should be a good ball game on Friday night, and we'll scout more on Greenwood, the Rangers, on Wednesday. All right, uh, before we get to our player of the week, which we start the, uh, today on the show and every Monday, 
You got a NASCAR update for us? Do I? Boy, it was <laughs> interesting. One again, and I got to give. <laughs> there we a, go. I got to give a shout out to Kyle Busch, even though he he was in the top three or four the whole race, and I kept. I mean, he made some good moves and all that. And you didn't hear much of oh, uh, what's old boy's name? Oh, uh, Larson. Yeah, Kyle Larson didn't wrecked. do much of nothing. He wrecked. So I had to give a shout out to Star. Her guy didn't perform too well, but didn't matter. Yeah, Mine didn't either. Season champion. He's yeah. the season champion. It wasn't. Uh, it's Kyle Larson. Well, that don't matter. <laughs> it does matter. So he stole that from. Uh, 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 Brian, uh, I'm too tired Denny. to start. Denny Hamlin, yeah. But uh, uh, Ryan Blaney won for a second week in a row. Uh, so congratulations wow. to him. And how about old Chris Busher? He needed a win to get in the playoffs, and he finished second. But he's a prosper Texas boy. So oh, how about that? Yeah, congratulations to him. But it was a neat race. Of course, at the end, you have a major pile up, and they did. So uh, he went to a white flag on the last lap, and Blaney cruised a victory. Well, there you go. There's your NASCAR Monday update. evening NASCAR <laughs> report right there. <laughs> hey, I want to go back to the football game a bit. We're going to have a lot of people watching NASCAR. We are. Well, I think we already do, as a matter of fact. Watch, you got me pumped up. We have a NASCAR watching party. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, before we get back, going back to the uh, game on Friday night, you talked about it, but, you know, they're up, I think it was 48-38 or 38-28, mm -hmm. and Jordan Leach, they're going in for the score, looks like, could have gone up 17 points. And I think about that play all weekend and just how big that strip was. Jordan played hard. I know he went down a couple of times with cramps, but always got back up. And to me, may not be your player of the game, but I think he made the play of the game. Yeah, I mean, he, he made, we had a lot of big plays, but he made one of the biggest at, at a timely, <clears throat> in a timely manner. We tell our kids, you know, uh, when we're good, we don't care where the ball is on the field. We don't care what the down and distance is. We just go and make the next play. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had given up a big play right before that. Yeah. I don't remember if it was the pass interference, which I watched. It didn't look like much of a pass interference mm -hmm. to me, but that was the call. Uh, they bounced back, and the kid was running, and, and Jordan just reached in there and stripped it and then fell right on it and recovered that ball and gave us the MO to go down there and put some points on the board. And, and uh and stay in the ball game, and you know, I, like I said, I tip my hat to the offense as well. They scored 58 points against a dang yeah, good defense with seven and, returners and, from last year's what, team. Yeah, what was nice is, is I uh, never doubted that they were going to score. I think we put in two times, and both times we punted were our fault. Right. Uh, we dropped a touchdown pass in the end zone. Jason Jackson dropped one that uh, he normally catches, and mm -hmm. it's rare to see him drop a ball anyway. But he dropped that one, which would have been big for us. But uh, I went over to the sideline, and our linemen were sitting there, and I told him, I said, man. After that score, I said, we get the ball back, we're going to score and win. And I looked at them, and as I see uh, Lamp pass is subbing kids in because they're just wore out, I looked mm -hmm. at our offensive linemen, and it looked to me like they had just got lathered up right before the game and had a little sweat going, and they were ready to go, and they had no fatigue, signs of fatigue. And they looked at me and said, Coach, we got this. So I was really pleased, and, and I believe them. Yeah. And they went down and got it done. I mean, you get the ball back tied 55-55 with a minute 47, I think it was, minute 49. And uh, for some reason, they didn't want to kick it deep. They pushed it over there to one of our better mm -hmm. uh, returning guys in case Markham. I mean, he made several catches, and he makes a catch on about 36, and they were offside. So we get five more tacked onto that. And next thing you know, we're knocking on the door scoring. If we had, a, if we had you know, 20 more seconds, we would have scored. Uh, but we ran the clock down, and, and I thought we managed the game properly, called a timeout to where we're going to kick it, and if we make it, we win. They don't have a chance for a return. If we don't, we go to overtime. And uh, it just worked out well for us, and uh, I couldn't be any more prouder of the team. I think we grew a lot as individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes it easy for us to coach this week because we can coach hard because they're going to be receptive to listening to us and applying what we're trying to teach them. And I think the things that, like I said before, the biggest thing for me that got me the most excited is everything that our coaching staff was preaching to them that we had to do to win ball games, sort of rebuild itself during that game. And our kids just kept doing what we asked them to do, kept doing what they asked them to do, and they were rewarded. Mm -hmm. That's what's big. You know, I, I talked to our kids, and I'll get a little spiritual on them, but uh, I told them, I said, we've been preaching, 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 and trying to get you to understand. I said, one night I was laying in bed, and I just prayed that the Lord opened their ears to hear what their coaches are telling them, and, man, it happened. So that's an answered prayer, and they just believed and bought in. And after I talked to them at the end of the game, I could have sold an anchor to a drowning man after that game because those kids were ears open, 
hearts open, excited about who they were and proud of their program and their team. And I thought they exemplified themselves in a way that that uh, can be appreciated by the fans and uh, the community. And they upheld the tradition uh, that who we are. And I mean, it just sort of all fell into place. And I thought it was a surreal moment for, for me and for our coach staff, and for our kids and for the fans, man, they were excited. Like I said, I don't hear the fans. I really don't. I'm too involved in the game, but man, there was multiple times I could not not hear them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were so loud and into the game, man. And if you don't think that doesn't give those kids fire and uh, passion, I mean, it was awesome. And um, one of our assistant principals who I was with at, at, at uh, Farmersville, uh, Ginger, uh, got to experience her first game, and I saw her this morning. And I asked her what she thought about it. She was like, it was awesome. And mm -hmm. I also uh, knew there's some people coming to town that had some local ties but never been to a Brownwood game. And they were hoping to see an exciting ball game. I think they got their uh, wish fulfilled too. So, all in all, it was a great night for Brownwood. But it's Monday afternoon, and we've already put in a day's work, and and we got to look for Greenville. And uh, you you celebrate those wins for about 24 hours, and it's on to the next one. So, uh, the grind is back on. Uh, we're going to try to prepare ourselves. I think we got an outstanding game plan. Uh, see if we can't solidify some things defensively and uh, continue to grow and work on some things offensively that we didn't do well. And then, of course, really focus on our special teams and our personnel to make sure we have the right people in the right spots and uh, do what we can to be successful. You know, I saw, I think, a post on uh, Facebook, Matt, McCain, Matt McCrane posted that uh, special teams is a third of the ball game, a third of the, the ball game and the system and all that. And he's exactly correct. I mean, there's three phases of the game, offense, defense, the one that most people forget about is a special team. So, uh, like I said, I, I took the blame. I told our kids it's my fault uh, for what happened on, on Friday on the kickoff return. And at the same lines, you look at the fact that we don't have any film on them. I thought our coaches, we rallied together, about three or four of us, and put a plan together on putting people in certain positions to try to counter what they were doing. And for the most part, I thought we did a good job of that. No doubt about that. All right, we get the win. It's on to Midland Greenwood. Time now, new feature here on the Monday Afternoon Show. It's a Player of the Week. It's brought to you by Jerry's Burgers and Triple T. And our first Player of the Week award, Coach. Yeah, you know, it's it was pretty neat. You know, Chance Jones, uh, we voted as a coaching staff. and. Uh, one thing I'm going to include in the future is to let our captains be a part of that selection and uh, I'll maybe talk to the principals and, and, and make sure our kids are doing what they're supposed to there and sort of get a, a whole rounded uh, approach to this player of the week. It's not just what you do on the football field on Friday night. It could be anybody on the team. It could be someone that's really working hard and practice to help us get better, that's done an invaluable job to help us be successful. But, uh, you know, Chance Jones had four touchdowns and and uh, threw for almost 200 yards and ran for 50 yards or yeah. whatever, but it's pretty hard to uh, overlook someone that rushes for 286 yards. And, I, you know, I mean, I think Conlon had an outstanding night, but Conlon Anderson is our player of the week. Way to go, Conlon. And remember, just a junior, as many of these kids on the field were the other night. Yep, and after a great season, and he gets back in the weight room and gets oh. stronger and stronger, I think he's going to uh, ev elevate his uh, opportunities to play at the next level. So congratulations, way to start the year. I mean, the guy has one game and 286 yards in the books. <sighs> What a way to start this season. He can do that every week behind it. You know, and I, if I was Conlon, I'd be walking up to those five, yeah. six linemen that, that paved the way for him and, and you know, how Emmett would buy him a car. I or was something. just thinking of that. He can't buy him a car, but he sure can get him a Coke at the Sonic or something. Yeah. But, uh, he ought to tip his hat to those guys because they were dominant and creating holes, but yet yards after carry for Conlon were big too. Yeah, you were, you and I were on the same page because I was thinking Emmett Smith, he bought him a gold watch at yeah, one time, then yeah. bought him some other stuff. Yeah, and he, he, got, always... he got a lot of money. Yeah, yards <laughs> after carry, not yards after I mean, yards yeah, after contact. Right. But, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. So way to go, Conlon. Big night, 200, what, 86, 85 yards, nearly 335 carries. Your player of the week brought to you by Jerry's Burgers and Triple T. Yeah, thank you very much. That's awesome. It is. Man, great show today, Coach. Yes, Anything sir. Anything else? Let's thank those that make this show possible. Auto Glass Magic, Avalon Custom Homes, Brunner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Everett Jones Investment, Henrik Medical, Howie Enterprises Hunt Repeats, Landmark Life, MC Bank, Painter & Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willie's Tees.
Coach, thank you as always. We'll visit again on Wednesday, and we'll get a scouting report on the Rangers. You bet. Have a great day, Brownwood. Brownwood Lions head football coach, athletic director, Sammy Burnett, on the Coaches Show every Monday and Wednesday at this time, and, of course, on KOXE 1013 and video streamed at KOXE.com.